prayer. There is a need for prayer among God's people today. Prayer leads to the proclamation of God's word. And the pouring out of revival. The National Day of Prayer is a vital year-round movement. Rallying prayer for America. As this movement has grown, it has inspired, encouraged, and ignited many prayer movements across our nation and around the world. Every year, the first Thursday in May is the National Day of Prayer. From early morning to late night, from the East to the West, God's people, young and old, will gather in prayer events across our nation to cry out to God for America and to pray God's glory across the earth. Habakkuk 2.14 proclaims a promise and a hope to every generation. Council of Delaware County, Media Pennsylvania Resolution. Whereas our nation welcomes and respects individuals of all faiths and protects the fundamental right of all individuals to practice their faith free from persecution and discrimination. And whereas throughout history, individuals have turned to prayer and reflection for strength in times of challenges and uncertainty. And whereas reflection and prayer provide an outlet to express gratitude, to request strength and healing, to seek wisdom, to seek guidance for our leaders and peace throughout the world. And whereas legislation was passed by President Ronald Reagan in 1988, establishing the first Thursday of the month of May as a National Day of Prayer, thereby providing Americans of all faiths with an opportunity to join in united prayer. And whereas people across the nation may observe National Day of Prayer on May 7, 2020, and use this day to seek comfort during the challenges we face as a world during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the County Council of Delaware County, hereby declare May 7, 2020 in Delaware County to be a national day of prayer. And Council recognizes the importance of prayer for many throughout the nation. National Prayer for America. Lord, we exist to give you glory. We exist because of your glory and in your glory as our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. We give thanks and praise for every breath and moment you have given to us. We repent of our sin for the shameful things we have done against you. And for our silence when we did not speak up to proclaim your name profess your word, or protect and practice your will. We ask for your forgiveness. We pray that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will spread across our nation and the entire earth as we seek your kingdom and righteousness. As we walk in obedience to you and in humble unity, love one another. Jesus, the Bible says that you are the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. You have taught us to pray, commanded us to love, and commissioned us to share your gospel grace. Your glory fills our hearts and families. It overflows into our neighborhoods. Workplaces, campuses, churches, in our entertainment and media. We give you thanks for our military and ask that your glory would spread to and through them as they preserve freedom around the world. We pray for our government that all of our leaders and laws would be filled with your glory. And they would magnify your holy word and honor your will and ways. We pray that your grace and glory would spread to bring hope to the hopeless. And love where there is hurt and hate. God, use us as we pray your promise 
that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. David, and it's been my great privilege for many years on this National Day of Prayer to sign the shofar and call God's people together for worship and prayer. We're going to do that again this year, but first, this virtual get-together via video is not what any of us envisioned. We expect it to be in the park here in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, basking in the sunshine of God's love together. Well, that's not happening, but here is what is happening. God is the same. Prayer is the same. Our surroundings, that's different. But because God is the same, today is going to be amazing, just like it always is. Now, there may be some newcomers, as well as some oldcomers, who are wondering, what is the deal with the shofar? There may be 4,000 years of Bible history and symbolism behind it, but, come on, is it still relevant today? Well, let me give you the backstory to his story. Because it was God himself that put the ram's horn on the center stage of human history to remind us of him. And we're only 20 pages into a book that will eventually be a 2,000 page book we call the Bible when God gets our attention with the ram's horn. The story is in Genesis 22. About 4,000 years ago, God calls to a man named Abraham and he says, Abraham, I'm going to make you into a great nation. And through your offspring, I'm going to bless all nations. Now that descendant God was referring to is the Messiah. So God makes a promise to give Abraham a son, even though Abraham is 100 years old and his wife Sarah is 90. But God fulfills his promise. Abraham gets a son. He names him Isaac. And Isaac is the heir of Abraham, but he is also the forefather of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Now, Sometime later, when Isaac's a teenager, God comes to Abraham again and he says, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and I want you to sacrifice him to me on the mountain I will show you. Did not see that coming. But Abraham obediently sets off from Mount Moriah in the region which will become Jerusalem. And when they arrive, Abraham says to his two servants, stay here with the donkeys, we will be back after we go worship the Lord. Abraham said, we, my son and I, will be back. Abraham did not know how God was going to spare this, his son, this child of promise. He didn't know if God was going to raise him from the dead, but he knew they were coming back. So they, they begin their climb up the mountain. Abraham puts the wood for sacrificial fire on the back of his son, Isaac. Much as Jesus would carry his cross up to the top of that mountain 2,000 years later in the very same place. And when they get to the top, or as they're nearing the top, Isaac says, Father, the wood and the fire are here, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham says, Isaac, God himself will provide the lamb. So they get to the top. Isaac and Abraham build a crude altar out of stones. They put the wood on top. And then Abraham binds his son, puts him on the wood, and raises the knife to sacrifice his son to God. But a voice calls out from heaven. And God says, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay a, a, a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know you fear God. For you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And then Abraham looks up, and there in a thicket, is a ram caught by its horns. Abraham goes and takes the ram and sacrifices to God as a burnt offering instead of his son. And today we look up and we see the shofar on this day of prayer and we are reminded God will provide. God always provides. God is with us, God is for us. We're gonna sound the shofar now because it reminds us that we have to follow God no matter the cost. It reminds us, as we hear it and as we see it, 
that loving God more than anyone or anything is the most important thing. And it also reminds us that God has fulfilled his promise to provide the blessing of salvation for the whole world. Because through Abraham and through Isaac came Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and our hope. And as we saw on the show far, please just turn your heart over to God. Let us talk to God. Let us pour out our hearts to him because he is the Lord our provider. We are here today answering the call of God to call on him, to make all our requests known and trust that he will provide all our needs, just as he provided that ram 4,000 years ago, and just as he provided the Lamb of God 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Shalom, everyone. My name is Mark Dion. I'm one on the ministry staff at Congregation Beth Yeshua. I'm a cantor there, one who does the chanting of prayers. But they've asked me to come today to pray for the nation of Israel. Now, why pray for the nation of Israel when this is our national day of prayer? We need to. We need to because when we pray for Israel, God says in Genesis, Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless Abraham's descendants, and those who curse him, he will curse. We need the blessing. Also, you know, God instructs us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God's covenant with Israel is an everlasting covenant. The land of Israel belongs to God. It's his land, his people, his land. God gave his people the land of Israel as an eternal possession. So today as I pray, and what a time to pray, we need healing in our land. And when we lift up the nation of Israel, God will bless this land. Abba, we thank you and praise you for this day, this national day of prayer. And Lord, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven and heal our land. Lord, we are people called by your name. And we are here today to pray for the nation of Israel, that your angels would be encamped about the walls and the borders of Israel, that no terrorists would come by their dwelling place away. You said that no weapon formed against her would prosper, God. So, Lord, we are asking you, we are asking you to let revival fall in the Arab nations, God. Let it fall, Father, that there would be peace in the Middle East, oh God. We know it's only going to be a temporal peace, but peace in the Middle East, God. Lord, make our enemies to be at peace with us, God. And we thank you for Israel. We look to you to bless the government of Israel, O oh God. Bring a stable government there, O oh God. And Lord, we curse this pandemic going on also in Israel, Lord. The loss of lives, the sick, Father. Lord, you're a God who does miracles. And we believe you to do miracles today. So protect Israel. Watch her borders, God. And bless this land. Because we stand with her, Father. In Yeshua's name. I've also been asked to... Perform the ironic benediction for everyone. So here we go. Be awesome, Today, the Lord bless you 
and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the God of Israel lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. And also this day, may the power and presence of God be in every one of your homes to break strongholds. To break strongholds on your behalf. For we ask this in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Jesus the Messiah. And all God's people said, Amen.
My name is Pastor Kells, and I am one of the campus pastors for Amplify Church in Pittsburgh, but we have a Philadelphia campus that my wife and I get the privilege and the honor of being the campus pastors at. I'm so excited to join you today on this National Day of Prayer, and I've been assigned the responsibility and the task of praying for awakening and revival in our land. Because truly, if there's anything that we need right now, we need a revival. So let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you now that you are sending a an awakening to our land. You are sending an, a revival to the people of this nation. God, I thank you that none of this has caught you by surprise. None of this has caught you off guard. You are the God that fights 
for us. And so, Father, I'm praying right now that you would send your angels to fight on behalf of your people. Now, God, I thank you that you are igniting a hunger and a passion within your people to go after you like never before. We're tired of going after things. We're tired of going after items. We're tired of going after stuff that will pass away. God, I thank you that right now we're running after what's eternal. I thank you. We're running after what uh, terrestrial, Father. We're going after your glory, Father. I thank you that you are igniting a fire in your people to be the church, not just do church, not just to have church, but to be the church right now. God, I thank you that the millennial generation is awakening to their purpose, that the millennial generation is awakening to their calling, that the millennial generation is awakening to do what you've assigned them to do right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are igniting a fire within us, God, to go after revival. I thank you that the people of, of God are turning back to your heart, that you said that if your people who were called by your name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked way, then will you hear from heaven. So God, we thank you that heaven is open now, that your ear is turned towards us now, that you are not, you are not so distant from us that you do not hear our prayers. God, I thank you that right now that love is being awakened. I thank you, God, that hope is being revived right now, Father, those that feel like they can not go any further. Those that feel like they cannot take another step. Those that feel like they cannot survive another day in isolation. Father, I thank you that you are awakening them to your presence. You are awakening them to your glory, God. I thank you that right now in this moment, that mother that's been dealing with this pandemic and she doesn't know where the money is going to come from to keep a roof over her and her kid's head. That father that has been dealing with how to lead through this pandemic pandemic and make a way for their family, Father, to that pastor that is feeling the pressure and the weight of leading and trying to push his church to get hope and love in this pandemic. That businessman that is afraid that his business is going to crumble and go under God right now. I thank you that you're sending them peace. I thank you that you're sending them resources. I thank you, God, that you are sending them exactly what they need, Father. Those of us that have been serving for years in your house, God, I thank you that you're opening up the windows of heaven and you're pouring out blessings onto our house. God, I thank you that you are causing us to have peace in the middle of the storm. God, I thank you that we are standing at the edge of the forefront of the greatest revival that the millennial generation has ever seen. Father, I'm praying now that miracle signs and wonders are going to be in abundance on the other side of this. Father, I thank you that the supernatural is going to be so evident and tangible on the other side of this. Father, I thank you that that you're making yourself real to people in this moment, Father. I thank you, God, that you have not isolated us because you're mad at us. You've isolated us because you wanted to spend time with us, God. I thank you that you're causing us to know what's important and who's important. I thank you, God, that you are awakening our senses to understand the signs of the time. Father, I thank you. You're causing us to be more sensitive to your voice, more sensitive to your presence, more sensitive to your word, more sensitive to your instruction, more sensitive to your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that now are the days of the greatest revival, that now is the days of the greatest awakening. God, I pray now for the earth is groaning in eager expectation for the sons and daughters to be revealed. I thank you that the sons are rising up. I thank you that the daughters are, are coming to the forefront. No longer will we hide in our past and in our pain, but Father, we're about to walk boldly into our purpose. And I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. I thank you, God, that you're sending answers now, that you're sending provision now, that you're making ways now, and that even when we don't see it, you're still working. Even when it doesn't feel like it, you're still working. I thank you, God, that you don't leave us in the fire by ourselves, but you get 
in the fire with us. And so, Father, we step aside and we say, you be God. And may the God that answers by fire, may that God be God. And we know that you are the all-consuming fire. And so, Father, we thank you that in this moment right now, you are causing us to come alive. I'm prophesying to you right now listening to me pray. Come alive. Let your dreams come alive. Let your purpose come alive. Let your let your destiny come alive. You are not held back. God is pushing you forward. And it is in the mighty and the matchless and the unadulterated name of Jesus Christ that we pray, pray and we plead the blood over every person listening to this prayer. It's in Jesus' name that we declare victory. Amen. Hey everyone, my name is Ron Cantor and I lead a ministry called Tikkun International here in Israel. I'm in Tel Aviv right now and uh, we've been on lockdown for quite a while. We're just beginning to open up, but it's, it's a real honor to be with you today to pray uh, for God's grace on our world. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Matthew Mayer, and it's an honor to join you through the medium of technology to call upon the God of eternity. He is truly Lord of all, and because of his sovereignty, we can have confidence and rest assured that our times are actually in his hands. Yet, it is still our spiritual responsibility to call upon his name and ask for the knowledge of his glory to be diffused globally. And for such a time as this, right here, right now, we're going to pray for a spiritual awakening to sweep across our land, for revival to break out within our hearts. You see, for too long, the church in America has been dormant. But because of this virus, we know God is shaking us up in order to wake us up. And it's in that vein alone that I want to approach the throne room of grace in Christ alone. So would you join me as we pray together? Hi, I'm Phil Capuccio of Sound of the Trumpet Ministries with my wife, Denise. And in a few moments, we're going to pray concerning spiritual awakening that's needed in our land and pray for our government. But I want to begin by reading uh, this year's theme found out of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. This is a promise for the Lord. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And Paul revealed in 1 Corinthians that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord was revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. And so join us in prayer right now. My prayer for awakening and revival in our land. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Father God, I pray for an awakening and a revival in our land. Lord, I pray that you would purify our nation. God, help us to humble ourselves and to call upon the name of the Lord, for you alone have the power to save. God, you alone can give life to those that are depressed. God, those that are discouraged, those that are anxious, Father, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, we ask for grace and for mercy. We come to you. We humble ourselves, Father. We recognize in the face of this coronavirus how utterly dependent we are on you, O oh God. Uh, we have seen how our world can be turned upside down in a second, O oh God. And we just repent, Father God. We repent. We ask forgiveness that we have taken so much for granted. And we have not valued you the way that we should. We acknowledge our deficiencies outside of you. And it's with that humility that we claim dependency upon you. We are a people so desperate for your sovereignty. Lord, your word says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach yes. to any people, God. And Lord, our nation has, um, we've legislated very simple behaviors like abortion and other things, Lord, and we ask for your forgiveness for us, yes, Lord, we and do, for those Jesus. leaders that have been involved with that in Congress and, and other parts of our government. This day as a nation, we have set aside for prayer, but this year we find ourselves in a tangible reminder of our fragile faith. We went about our days ignoring your goodness and mercy. May this crisis open our minds and hearts to recognize your power and will, O oh God. We bow before you asking for your grace to live as we should in holiness. So Father, in the name of Yeshua, we ask your forgiveness. We ask for an outpouring of your spirit on America, 
on Israel, on this entire world, God, that we would see a great world revival. You, you said times of revival would come from the presence of the Lord. We ask during these difficult times, during this time of uh, pandemic and this time, Lord, when uh, this nation's being shaken, we ask that there would come a spiritual awakening, that men and women alike, that the church and that all that are in this nation, consciences would be made aware and awakened to the glory of God. And Father, we pray for first revival in our homes, God, and ultimately Lord, in our nation, God. I pray that our homes, God, would be a place where you enjoy residing in. God, I ask that you would give us the strength to burn our idols, Lord, and to turn to you. God, we acknowledge, Lord, that without you, we are nothing. We pray that parents will set a pattern of seeking your hand in all things so that our children may find their strength and hope in you instead of worldly desires. God, we pray for uh, the president in America, President Trump, that you would give him grace, that you would give him wisdom, God. We pray, God, that during this time that you would move upon the hearts of senators and congressmen, that there would be a greater conviction, Father God, at how they speak, how they treat each other. Father God, we pray that there be a spirit of unity, God, not a false unity, but a unity based on your word. Yes, Lord. Lord, and I, I just lift up our government here in America, yes, Lord. Lord. Lord, we're in such a, a critical time, but probably one of the most um, intense times since the founding of this nation in many ways. Um, we've had many intense times, but this is one of those most intense times, Lord. Yes, we Lord. just lift up our government leaders, Lord. I lift up uh, President Trump and Vice President Pence, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. And the team that is working on the coronavirus task force, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would give them um, wisdom from heaven, Lord, to know to understand the times, Lord, as it says in your word, and, and knowing what to do, God. Yes, Lord. That they would hear a word behind them saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, whether they turn to the left or whether they turn to the right, Lord. And that they would um, have that ability, Lord, to, to make the decisions that they need to make that would be for the best of all of us that live in this nation, God. And yes, your word Jesus. commands us to pray for those in authority, Lord, whether we agree with them or not. Lord, that is your um, your command to us as your people, Lord. So we lift them up and we also lift up all the governors of the states, Lord. Yes, Lord. So I ask that you revive the hearts of every believer, Lord. I pray for revival to come on our nation and on our churches, God. Father, we ask, can we believe that you will send your rain? Your word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear them in heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Lord, make much of yourself through us. Bless every single heart that has participated in this day of prayer. We are your people called by your name. We truly humble ourselves. We hunger and thirst for your righteousness. We turn from our wicked ways and pursue your holiness. And you promise to hear us. You promise to forgive us. You promise to heal us. And we thank you for that. You promise to cover this earth, cover this nation with the knowledge of your glory. Let there be a turning to the Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord, the way you have visited us before in years past, may you visit us, Lord, and may you move mightily in the land. We need a revival and a great awakening that comes from your presence. And we stand on your promise in Habakkuk. You said that the earth would be filled with the knowledge of your glory. Fill our hearts, fill our land with the knowledge of your glory in Jesus name. We're expecting revival, revival all over the world, all over the globe, Father. Pour out your Holy Spirit, God. Let us see a powerful end times revival in the name of Yeshua. Help us to acknowledge you, Lord, at the beginning of each day and offer our work for your glory. And in times of crisis, let us let our first response as your people be to pray for protection and guidance. Lord, I pray, God, that you would um, 
first of all, draw those who don't know you to yourself, Lord. That yes, they Lord would come Jesus. to um, a living knowledge of who you are and a relationship with you, God. We ask, God, that you would um, use them, Lord. And Lord, those that are, are, have just not been in alignment with your word, God, Lord, we ask, God, for a course correction, Lord. We thank you for your never-ending forgiveness your son had earned for us on the cross. His suffering proves your inexhaustible mercy, and so we know you will never abandon us as a nation. Lord, we acknowledge that you are currently working things out for good, even though we can't see it. We trust that you are awakening your church, that you are awakening the slumbering Christian. I pray you put fire back in our souls, passion to be lights in a dark world. Lord, that you would give us the ability to rise up and begin to point to Jesus in all we say and do. Nothing else matters. We recognize that. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his work. We thank you for his death that atoned for every sin. And we claim that here and now. We pray that those out there that would be happening upon this prayer moment would begin to sense your presence. And Lord, we yield our will for your will. We want your will to be done. We want your kingdom to come. We ask for your providence, your governance over our lives. We know it starts with us. If we want revival to break out around us, Lord, we're giving you access to have revival break out within us. Shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my Oh, love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Oh, love is the power where my freedom song is found. I hear that trumpet sound I'm 
Pastor of Victory Church, so thankful for this opportunity to join together digitally with fellow believers throughout the Delaware Valley, believing God for a great awakening. This year's theme is Pray God's Glory Across the Earth. And I believe this global crisis is only God's way of setting us up for global revival. I truly believe that God's glory is filling the earth. His glory is already here, but he's manifesting himself to more and more people as the minutes go by. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hello everyone. Welcome to this year's National Day of Prayer event. Um, my name is Dave Harris, also known as Preacher. I am the chaplain of the motorcycle organization Stars and Stripes, Bars and Pipes, uh, PA Alpha Chapter. I was asked to pray for revival of our land. Um, I believe our God is the King of all nations, as spoken in Revelation 15.3. Uh, Jeremiah revealed that the Lord has plans, not just for individuals, but also for people's groups. Uh, I believe when a nation turns from evil and listens to the Lord, it is then he will direct his 
great mercy and grace to that land and its people. So let us boldly pray with determination and zealous passion. I'm greeting you from St. Albans, New York, on this day of prayer. As we pray for revival and reformation and a return to primitive godliness. And we have that assurance because in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14 we are told, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Father, we are your people and we are called by your name. So we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek your face so that you can hear from heaven and heal our land. Lord God, that as we endure this hardship as a nation, that we would expect from it a harvest of righteousness and peace. And Lord, that your church during this time would be demonstrating that quietness and confidence that come from knowing that we can trust in you, knowing that you give a peace that the world can't give and that the world or coronavirus or nothing else can take away. We pray for the nations, oh God. We pray for the nations, oh God. We pray, God. We prophesy and declare reformation, oh God. We declare reformation, oh God. We declare revival, oh God, for this national day of prayer, God. We're praying in advance, oh God. And we are saying, oh God, there's an awakening, oh God. There's an awakening on the land. Oh God, men that are dead, oh God. Men that are dead in religion. Oh God, we pray, God, you stir up the hearts of men. So, Lord, we pray that your glory would saturate and consume this region, this nation, and this entire world, Father. I praise you, God, for the land we live in, Father, for the United States of America, and for all of its blessings that you have bestowed upon it. I thank you, God, for the church you have raised up in our great nation from generations past to present. Lord, I pray for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Let it be fanned into flame throughout your body, the church, and throughout our land. And so, Heavenly Father, we call upon your omnipotent name. In the name of your omniscient Son, through the power of your omnipresent Spirit, we were asking, Lord, for this revival and reformation. We ask that you will forgive us for our sins, the sin of prayerlessness. We ask you for an infilling, an outpouring, and an indwelling of your divine spirit. When big, new, bad things happen, Lord Jesus, you see them and you say, let it wake you up. Let it be your wake-up call. Let it be your wake-up call to turn from sin. Whatever form it takes. So I pray for an awakening in this land. Father, we pray to you right now to awaken the hearts of the people of this land. Awaken our minds to you, O oh Father. Open our ears that have been so torn away from you. May we listen to you as you call us. May we listen to the words that you speak and the commandments you give to us. May we go forth with boldness because we know that you, you love us and you protect us. We pray, Lord God, that you would cause the church to rise up in such faith and in such expectation that a revival must happen in America, that there would be another great awakening, that your church would rise and shine with the light of your glory. Lord, through our words and through our deeds, through a powerful witness, we pray that you would be exalted and that thousands and thousands, that millions would be drawn into the kingdom of God. Lord, we're expecting it for greater Philadelphia. We're expecting it for our nation. Oh, let God arise, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let God arise, let COVID virus be scattered, let COVID 
virus be driven out of the earth. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let his enemies be scattered. God, you arise today. We believe that you're making a change, Lord. You're turning the tide. You're turning the tables in Delaware County, Father. You're getting a hold of the hearts of your people. You're bringing those who know you to repentance in areas that they didn't know they needed to repent, Father. And you're bringing those who don't know you, the lost, unto repentance, that they would fall at your feet, that they would realize, Father, that there's nothing that satisfies, there's nothing that brings peace except the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, draw them unto yourself by the power of your Spirit, Father. May we repent, Lord, so that we would have great awakening and revival, another awakening, Lord God, a global revival before your return, Jesus. Lord, I pray that bodies would be consecrated, complete soul and spirit to your fresh purpose. Father, use each of us here today as an agent of revival and national transformation. We pray that each morning we would be awakened by your Son to have our lips and our souls anointed with grace that we would know how to speak a word in season to those who are weary and heavy burdened. And he's talking to us. Lord Jesus, you are talking to us and we want to listen. We want to wake up, Lord Jesus. We want to wake up, Lord Jesus, and we want to see what you alert us to see when bad things befall us. Let us see our sin, and especially, Lord Jesus, especially when it is a large event encompassing so many in our whole community, in our whole city, region, in our whole state, in our whole nation, in our whole world, Lord Jesus. We ask that, that you would enable us to open our ears to this ringing alarm, to this annoying bell, to this frightening virus, to this unavoidable disturbance. The normal is not the normal anymore. That you would wake us up, Lord Jesus, to our sin. I pray, Lord, every local church you have raised up in our nation will be a house of prayer, just as you command it in your word. Lord, let your consuming fire burn all the evil that has attached itself to your church and our nation. Lord, purify your people in holiness and erase any doubt or unfaithfulness from your land and from the bride of Christ. We desire to emerge from the laziness, the, really the death-like practice of sleeping through our lives of sleeping through opportunities to serve you, of sleeping through opportunities to obey you, of sleeping through opportunities to live out your love, of sleeping through opportunities to share you with the world. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would wake us up and that in getting out of lazy, death-like sleep. We would live as awake persons, feeling the brush of your Holy Spirit blowing across our face. Father, may we have an encounter with you like Moses did with the burning bush. May we realize that you are dwelling here and that you desire to live within us and through us. So awaken our hearts. Stir us up. Oh God, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, and even as you taught your disciples, we are joining our mustard seed faith today, Lord. 
throughout this nation, a nation whose principles were based upon godliness. Oh God, please hear our cry, we pray, and let your ears be attentive to the prayers that we're offering up today. In the name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our High Priest, our Intercessor, and our soon coming King, in whose name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen and Amen.